Hi everyone, it's Andrew here. So a company that many of us have been following is Alibaba. It has been a rough 12 months falling 70% or so in just a short period. And we all know about the regulatory changes and speculation around China. We've got the government rules just have been changing a lot. People are nervous about the Cayman Islands holding ADR structure, changing all that stuff. We've got the China and Taiwan nervousness as well. And that's been hitting the news a lot more frequently lately. And then there's the extreme COVID rules in China, especially in Shanghai, making things just far more abnormal. Now I've heard many times that China is uninvestable and from some really smart people. So I really understand that it is very difficult to have any confidence in an investment like Alibaba. And at the moment, I guess it feels like kind of a mistake. It is definitely testing everyone's convictions in this investment. Then Charlie Munger came out and sold half of his the Daily Journal stake in Alibaba, which is why a lot of people had invested in the first place. So there's a lot going on here, but this isn't the whole picture. They're still a very lean business operating that we still need to examine. And I'll go through the most recent earnings to do that. And then I'll attempt to do an updated valuation for the business later in the video. So just quickly, there's an interactive brokers link in the description if you're looking for a safe broker with low fees. Also, there's a link to my e-magazine where I publish my market commentary, my watch list, and my updated intrinsic value calculations for a big list of companies that I follow. It's $10 a month for those interested. Take a look at the February edition to see what it's all about. So when I go to the earnings report from Alibaba, the first thing I wanna look at is the uh, active consumers that they have and whether that's growing or not. Because if this is declining, well, the business is suffering. So if this is increasing, well, that's, you know, it's going in the right direction. And we've got here that it's the total gross merchandise volume um, is up 2% for the year. And that's, well, even though international is up 13%, it only makes up a very small part of their overall. So look, the fact that it's getting a little bit bigger is a good sign. It doesn't feel like it's, well, it's definitely not declining and it's, so it's not going backwards. So that's a good start. Total revenues up 19%. That's really strong. And the only segment that didn't decline by double digits or 15% plus is their digital media and entertainment, but it still went up a little bit anyway. So if top line revenue is growing, why has this stock gone from 300 down to under $100? And it's because of the earnings. And the earnings per uh, American depository share is at gone from $54 to 22. So that's the issue here. It's a decline of 58% on their earnings. So that's profit. That's the issue here with the company. But as you can see by the top line revenue and their consumers, the business is still improving. It's just obviously their costs are becoming significantly greater at the moment. Whether that continues or not, we're not sure. And that's what we've got to dig into further. So fortunately enough, Alibaba actually tell us their costs and their operating expenses pretty clearly here in just this diagram, these diagrams here. So we've got the cost of revenue has gone up from 57% to 62%. And you know, that's, that's a 5% increase. That's quite significant. So there is a piece of the profitability that's getting taken away. We've got product development expenses has gone up a little bit as well. It's only gone up by 1%, but still that's, um, that's another thing to add in. And then we've got another 3% here for the sales and marketing expenses for the year end. So again, add that in on top. But the general and admin expenses, so paying for staff and admin people and things like that, it's actually gone down uh, 3%. So that's good. So they're tightening up their operations and you know cutting costs where they can see opportunities to cut costs, but where they're not cutting costs is in their sales marketing uh, and their product development expenses. So I actually think that's pretty feasible in my eyes. I probably would be wanting to see exactly that if I was running a business. So I'd want to see my admin costs going down, um, but my growth drivers going up. So I'm, I'm good with that so far. Um, no big issues here. Now I'm just going to have a quick look at the cash flow statement and the balance sheet. This is just a snapshot that Alibaba provided. And we can see the free cash flow has gone from 172, I think that's billion and down to 98. So it's a 43% decline in their free cash flow. And that's quite significant. That's in line with their profitability of the business. And that's something that we want to see that trend reverse. And I can now see why the stock price is getting punished is because this free cash flow number has significantly reduced. And that's going to play into our calculations of um, our valuation when we get to that a little later. So that's interesting. 
And I just want to see the balance sheet. You want to see it's still got a significant amount of cash, which they've had for many years now. And look, their net cash position here in US dollars is 54 billion US dollars. That is massive. This is a very safe balance sheet by that $54 billion number. So now turning to the valuation and what I'm gonna do is just play around a little bit here with a discounted cash flow model and a five year valuation model as well. And look, I'm just gonna use from the current free cash flow number, I've turned it into US dollars, that's 14.8 billion. Um, that's that essentially that 100 billion um, Chinese yuan uh, turned into USD. And then I've got the shares outstanding and their total cash and growth rates of 10% getting a strong discount rate of 22%, essentially aiming for 15% per annum with a big margin of safety. And it looks, says I wanna buy this at about $85, around about the current share price it is now. It's not growing at 10%, as the top line revenue was growing at, what, 19%, I think it said, and it had been growing at around about 20 to 30% over the last decade or so. So I would say 10% growth from here is um, very, very conservative considering the low base we're at at the moment with the free cash flow because the free cash flow has come back very significantly. You would think we're going to get 15% and all, we now want to buy this at about $108. So yeah, the valuation has come down quite a lot from when I was buying this at like $190. But even at $190, I still feel pretty confident that I'm going to get a pretty good return here. Now, if I turn to a five-year valuation model, which I have here, where I've just put in the current revenue, a five-year growth rate, um, the free cash flow percentage as a percentage of the revenue, a fair multiple, the dilution rate. Now that's including so that's the buybacks plus the um, share compensation. It actually evens itself out. So I'm going to keep call that two percent. Uh, sorry, zero percent. Uh, the shares outstanding is the same number, and the current market cap. And I put all these numbers in. It tells me that my five year compound annual growth rate is going to be around about fifteen percent, based on this these five year numbers. Now. We, before um, I said that 10% was probably going to be very conservative from these low numbers that we're seeing at the moment. So I would like to put that up a little bit to get a bit more of a feel. And now we're talking about a compounding growth rate of around 20% with the target share price of around 200, a little over $200. Look, these are just numbers. Whether this actually happens or not, I have no idea, but it gives me confidence to see that buying this at around about the price as it is now, at around that $100 mark, um, is very conservative and very safe, I would say. The issues that we talked about at the start of the video are still prevalent, but I think the models all look like this is a good deal. So I guess I am worried a little bit about Alibaba, just a tiny bit, I guess, because there is still a lot of risks that China does something crazy. I don't know, but Alibaba has a lot of tailwinds as well, and the business is restructuring a little bit, but still growing customers and revenue. I still feel pretty good about this and have no reason to be alarmed, more sitting and waiting for this one. It might just take a while. Would I invest more is the question that I get asked quite a lot. Well, the answer to that is I've already invested a lot, so I don't have any desire to purchase more, but if I came into some money, then I would probably buy a little more. It's a pretty great deal, but it's not gonna return 100X. So I would prioritize a business that I thought could return like 100X over the next few decades. I hope this was interesting. I'll aim to do this update again in August when the next earnings are released. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time.